Welcome to the LifeWay Sunday School lesson for November 1st, 2020. The title of today's lesson, Committed to His Word. And the main point of today's lesson, God's Word gives trustworthy guidance for all of life. Today's scripture text, Psalm 119, verses 1 through 11. Now, have you ever been in a situation where you really wish you could find somebody who was knowledgeable and could give you good advice, good instruction, good guidance, good directions on what to do. Only to find out that a lot of times you know just as much as the person you're trying to get advice from or anything you might have done research online, it just isn't helping. Be so nice to have somebody who really knows what they're talking about. Well, if you're looking for a good life coach, you can find some friends who have a lot of good advice, good sense, but the best guidance is to go to God's Word or follow the leadership of God's Holy Spirit. Today we're going to be talking about the first 11 verses of Psalm 119, which is all about God's Word and how it makes us happy to live according to God's instruction. Now we don't know who wrote Psalm 119. We, we have some ideas. Bible scholars have various theories they put forth. We know a lot of Psalms are written by Moses, David, and a number of musicians and writers throughout several generations of Israel's history. But Psalm 119 is kind of a mystery. But one thing's for sure, the person who wrote it really did love the Word of God. Psalm 119, a longest chapter in the Bible, falling somewhere near the middle of the Bible, 176 verses, broken up into 22 stanzas of eight verses each, and it is an acrostic. Some of your Bibles will have letters of the Hebrew alphabet indicating each of these 22 stanzas, and in the original Hebrew, each stanza would begin each of its words with that particular letter. But it's all about God's Word. Almost every one of those 176 verses have some reference to God's Word, God's commands, God's statutes. Now, this was written as a hymn. Can you imagine singing a hymn with 22 stanzas? We don't know exactly how the music in the original Hebrew went, but we know that this has been put to music many times, many ways, in several languages. In the original Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, Latin, and even people in Old England had a, a version of it that some of them actually sang when they went on long walks. Verse 1 says, Blessed, which in the original Hebrew translates, Oh, how happy are the undefiled which uh, means blameless, pure, innocent. People who are undefiled in the way they walk, in the way they live, who walk in the law of the Lord. Verse 2, blessed or happy are those who keep his decrees, also written as testimonies. This verse goes on to tell us that people who seek him with their whole heart are blessed and happy people. You may have noticed that we're living in a generation now of a lot of very unhappy people. And most of those very unhappy people want no part of God's Word. Devout Christians who truly love God and truly love the Word and their fellow man, they're happier people. So many people want to find happiness, but they don't want any part of God or His Word. Verse 3, these happy people do no iniquity. They are not lawbreakers. They are people who try very hard to live by the rules and the laws of God. These happy people walk in His ways. They live according to the Word of God. Verse 4, you have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. And exactly what are precepts? Well, they're rules for living. In Matthew 5, verse 8, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart. And in the Greek, as well as in the Hebrew, the word that is used in that language also means happy or fortunate 
or you have a reason to smile. Think about how God's Word has blessed your life. How it's helped you in many ways. Think about what have been some of your favorite verses that you keep going back to. Verse 5 translates this way. Oh, that my ways were directed or committed to keep your statutes. Now think about how you were raised, those of you raised in a Christian home, raised to learn the scripture and live by it. How sad it is that so many people are not raised now to respect scripture and live by it. As I said before, these are not happier people. Now in your present life, how do you still discipline yourself to your everyday behavior? And how much of that self-discipline is based on what you know of Scripture. Verse 6 translates this way, Then I shall not be ashamed when I look into your commandments. Sometimes we are ashamed of ourselves when we consider God's Word and how far short we fall from the standard that it sets. And yet God continues to be patient and forgive us, and we need to keep reapplying ourselves to His Word. Verse 7 translates, I will praise you with an upright heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. And verse 8, I will keep your statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. The psalmist is crying out, please don't ever abandon me. You cannot really have true fellowship with God unless you follow his word. And here's a question to ponder. How would you describe somebody who is totally devoted to God and his word? Verse 9 poses the question, how can a young man cleanse his way? Then it answers its own question, by taking heed according to your word. The word of God keeps a person of any age from sin if they truly are in the word. Verse 10, I have sought you with my whole heart. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. And this is the last verse for today, 119.11, in the King James Version, and this one is worth memorizing. Thy word have I hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. As we begin to close the lesson, we'll close with some action points. Number one being, read the Bible, study it, meditate upon it, ponder it, let it speak to you every day, and do this with a lot of prayer. Point number two, find practical ways to make God's Word more and more a part of you. Consider ways to store it in your heart and mind by memorizing or just by continually exposing yourself to it, listening to recordings or finding other ways to constantly have the Word in your mind. And finally, find ways to share it in your singing, in your conversations, in your, in your talk, in your declarations, in your postings. And if the Lord has enabled you to teach the Word of God, then teach it to others. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Forgive us of our many sins. Help us to truly live by your word and be a demonstration of your word to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path.